John Bozeman was reelected to the U.S. Senate this month, where he'll continue to represent the people of Arkansas in the halls of Congress. He's beginning his third term as the top Republican on the Senate Ag Committee. What does it mean for the Democrats to effectively keep control of the Senate? And how important is that Georgia Senate race as the new term begins? Here's my conversation with Arkansas Senator John Bozeman. Senator, first of all, congratulations on an election in which you got 66% of the vote against two opponents. Two opponents, and they couldn't even break 34% against you. I think that's a great start and an incredible mandate as you uh, begin uh, this next term as the senior senator from Arkansas. Well, thank you, Governor. I'm just trying to follow your lead, my mentor in so many different ways now for so many different, so many years. So well, we were blessed. We worked hard. And as you know, uh, you know, uh, the people of Arkansas elected me and elected many others, including uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who is going to do a tremendous job as governor of Arkansas. Well, and I don't have to tell you that uh, she is one of your biggest fans, loves you, and uh, of course worked in your campaigns in the past. And obviously you didn't need her help. You did it in a wonderful way this time. But, but I want to talk about the mandate that you have, and it is a mandate. That kind of vote indicates the people of the state uh, believe in what you're doing. Uh, part of, I think, is that you are the ranking member on the Agricultural Committee. A lot of people may not understand, but that's a big deal for people in agricultural states like Arkansas. It, it is a big deal, Mike. It's a big deal for rural America. In Arkansas, agriculture is 25% of our economy, which you know very, very well. If you get outside of any town of any size, though, it's probably 85 or 90%. It's all that's left. We've lost our manufacturing to a large degree in those areas. And so, you know, taking care of agriculture, taking care of our rural schools, our rural hospitals, making sure that, that, that the amenities that you need uh, for growth uh, is so, so very important. In Arkansas, we've got 75 counties, probably 52, 53 of them lost population. And so you don't have a whole lot to begin with. You start losing those turn back dollars. So we really do need to address this and form a big coalition, not only with our urban legislators, our urban decision makers, but our urban decision makers working with those in the country to make sure that we have a viable rural America. Let's do a little postmortem on the elections. Uh, quite frankly, I was shocked that we didn't have this red wave that many of us expected, and I predicted it. I was wrong. It was a pink trickle instead. What happened? Well, I think a lot of it, we actually had pretty good voter turnout, all of those things. I'm told that we, you know, we actually won the, the aggregate vote. I think it was just a combination of things. I think that a lot of people showed up to vote uh, the abortion issue and, uh, you know, voted against us in that regard. Uh, sometimes our candidates weren't as strong as we'd like. Uh, and then the other thing, Mike, is I think we need to learn from uh, Georgia and Florida regarding uh, how, you, how you, the new election methods, uh, when you were going through, early voting was not a, a big issue. Mailing voting was very little. That's not the case now. So those things aren't going to go away. What we've got to do is learn how to, to make sure that we get out our vote using those types of things, just those tools in the toolbox. I think we'll do a lot better. There was some concern as to whether there would be a leadership change in the Senate. Would Mitch McConnell survive a challenge? He clearly did with only 10 senators voting for someone else. Um, he also has said he doesn't want to see big changes in the way things are done. There's nothing to negotiate. Is the Senate in the right place? Is it doing what it should do in terms of its internal organization? Or is there, is there room for some change? No, there's room for change. And we, we really met extensively for two days. We're going to be meeting a lot more regarding, uh, you know, how we do business uh, just the efficiencies and, and, and then also uh, really, I think, picking out three or four things that we simply must get done. Uh, 
but I, it's interesting, you know, you go through these these periods where you have some dissension, and the dissension was was uh, not so much about accomplishment. Nobody's accomplished more than Mitch McConnell regarding fundraising. You look at the three judges that we that we got in the Supreme Court, uh, and the list goes on and on and on. The the, uh, uh, the 2017 tax cut bill, which really dramatically increased our economy. So all of those things are great. And he not only had his finger in that, he was the guiding, the guiding guy. But I do think that there's a, there's a want to, to, to be a little bit more inclusive. And after meeting for two days, I think that, that, you know, that's been recognized. We're going to put some things in place and I think that will make us more efficient and then also do a better job communicating with the public as to what we're trying to get done. Senator. 12 Republican senators uh, last week voted to uh, codify same-sex marriage into law. And I think a lot of people were a little surprised that that many senators uh, broke with a traditional view of marriage, actually kind of took it away from states uh, to push that. It would seem that maybe that was an issue best left to the states, let them decide what happened and why did so many of the senators, uh, some certainly leaning a little left, but why would they have voted? with the Democrats on that issue? Well, you know where I'm at on that. I believe that marriage is between a man and a woman, and, uh, you know. Uh, and I also believe it's, it's pretty much settled law. Eight of, the, eight of the nine Supreme Court judges indicated that. So uh, the purpose of this, uh, I think, was for the Democrats uh, essentially to try and get the narrative away from the fact of the tremendous inflation that we've got going on, all the other problems, uh, looking at uh, gas prices, uh, looking at the fact that that you know Thanksgiving has been so much more expensive than it was a year ago. The list goes on and on. So I was a little bit surprised, also. Uh, but you know, each senator has to to vote the way they feel like uh, is best representing their constituents. But certainly, this would not be the case you know, even a few years ago. I can't let you go without talking about inflation. You've described it as having a $500 impact on every single family in Arkansas. When you put it in those terms, it sounds uh, pretty dire. I mean, that's a big hit for families, 500 bucks a month. Do people think of it like that? Are they really understanding what inflation is doing to them? I think they're understanding now, Governor, much better. In the sense, you know, they've had a feeling something's wrong. You know, my, my dollars aren't stretching as far. And and now they're seeing it not only in their grocery prices, the gasoline prices, but their energy cost, health insurance. Uh, my health insurance is going up, I think, 20 percent this year. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on. The way I, I think best to describe it is it's almost like having 11 months of pay with a 12-month year compared to last year. Yeah. Uh, you know, five, $569 a month for the average Arkansan is a tremendous, the average family is a tremendous amount of money. And so people are feeling it. Sadly, I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. Uh, the I think the next baby formula type situation is going to be heating oil in the Northeast. That tracks very well with diesel. Diesel is continuing to rise. And we might even be looking at shortages. So these are serious problems. Those are the kind of things that we need to be dwelling on and solving versus gay marriage and things like that. Senator John Bozeman of Arkansas, senior senator for that wonderful state, which is my home state as well. And uh, we're very grateful to have you here. Thank you. And uh, hope you have a great Christmas, my friend. Thank you, Mike, and uh, we do appreciate you in so many different ways. And uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. Now, learn more about Senator John Bozeman and what he's doing for the people of Arkansas and America. Head over to Huckabee.tv, where, as always, you'll find links to keep up with our guests on social media. Hey, you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Since you're still here, let me share something with you. If you click on the subscribe button below, hit that notification bell next to it and click the like button, you know what that's gonna do? Virtually guarantee that you don't turn into an AOC fanatic. Do it now before it's too late.